Welcome back. At the end of chapter 1, which ended on day 69, Samantha Penford was forcefully placed inside of the simulation by Michael Lee, who had been trapped in there himself for over two months before this. And with the tape reports being titled, Death of Samantha Penford, it's safe to assume that something brutal was in store for her. Resuming three days later. On day 72, we are back inside the simulation with our game show host, who expresses that he misses McKaylee before we see Samantha into the game, who had been placed into the simulation as an ugly monster. Upon entering, she tries to use admin privileges to leave the game, however her attempts are unsuccessful. And during this interaction, we finally learn the name of the game show host. Sasha, which makes my job a whole lot easier. Sasha then begins to understand that since Sam is stuck with him, that neither of them will be able to escape. However, before he is able to panic, Samantha says there is one more thing they can try that Michael is unaware of. Day 75 begins with a note for investigation team. I have been informed by the FBI director that case files 0 to 36 have become some sort of inside joke to the investigation team. Please be aware that there is nothing amusing about a man hitting some metal 17 times. Making jokes about classified material could lead to dismissal, and you can't say fairer than that. The investigation team that this note speaks of is referring to the audience of the Instagram page, as many of the commenters were making jokes about the videos they were watching, such as, too much lore, not enough hitting metal. How was he able to refuse five pictures of motor car? I would have instantly caved in, and many more. Case Report 17623 Death of Samantha Penford, File 75, External 4. This recording is labelled as complete, telling us there is nothing missing from the tape. We then cut to an archived phone call between Michael Lee and another high level employee at Vale, Linda. Hello, Michael, how are you feeling? Linda, I am feeling like I'm going to punch a wall. Lovely, and how can I help with that? Can you tell me why the contents of Vault 3 is missing? So, Vault 3 was opened on January 20th. How can... Oh, and then two days later, it was opened again from the, in from the inside. It's a bit weird. The source is gone. Oh, no. That's a shame. Without the source, this company is nothing. Well, that's not true, Michael. You can still make those mouse maps. Linda, find the fucking source. Okay, yeah, I'll get on that today, Michael. Is there anything else I can help you with? During this phone call, we learn that the contents of Vault 3 at the Vale Company building are missing, the same vault that had its passcode stolen by Samantha on day 51. And despite Michael's concern for the missing items, Linda seems completely unbothered by the situation, almost as if she does not want Michael to find them. Michael refers to this item as the source, and while we're unsure exactly what the source is, it's safe to say that it was likely stolen by Samantha after she obtained the vault code, and it seems to me that she is intentionally trying to sabotage the company due to some unknown motive. The lack of care that Linda shows towards Michael's concerns also tells us more about his reputation at Vale, as it appears that he is disliked by a fair number of his workers, which may be linked to the neglect he is known for showing towards his employees that we learned about on day 49. On day 78, we are shown another tape from the Death of Samantha case report, this tape also being labelled as complete, and then cutting to camcorder footage from September of 1991, in which two men are seen inside a house discussing the debt that one of them are in, with the man in front of the camera saying that he owes $140,000, and further explaining that he has made some poor investment choices in the past. The camera then cuts, to which we hear an advertisement for Vale Industries play on the TV in the living room, explaining that they are looking for participants to test the Mirage game technology, and that subjects will receive a minimum of $50,000 if they help the company. And knowing that a sum of money that large would be very helpful in paying off his debt, the man in front of the camera decides to take part in these tests, and begins packing up his stuff. And eight days later, he leaves his house and drives to the Vale Company building. The last words we hear him saying being, I love you Joe, to which the cameraman responds, I'll miss you, Sasha. 
Four days later, on day 82, we learned that Sasha had been testing the Mirage products for Vale in hopes of receiving a large sum of money to help pay off his debt. He was promised he'd only be in there for a few weeks, however months had passed and he was still inside the simulation, telling us that this entire time, Sasha was also trapped inside the game against his will, just like McKaylee, which changes our perspective on this situation entirely and makes his reaction to McKaylee finding a way out much more upsetting as he was terrified of being left alone in there. And since the promises told to him had been broken, Sasha finds it difficult to trust Sam, who wants to work with him to escape the game. Samantha begins to explain that when the game updates, it becomes unstable, and that when it does, they might be able to make it crash. And during the explanation, text appears on the big screen asking the player to leave a review of the game for Byte magazine. And seeing this as an opportunity, Sasha sneakily leaves a review during the conversation which reads, help me, I'm stuck inside the simulation, Sam is not to be trusted. The review is then submitted and Sasha lies to Sam saying that they should work together and the video ends. Day 86 contains an audio recording of the Mirage game installation procedure that is being carried out on Test Subject 2, with the recording day estimated to be between the 25th and 29th of September. The recording then plays out in what is quite possibly the most chilling part of the entire series. Can we move Subject 2 into position, please? Thank you. An update on the source when you're ready, please. For some reason, the source is reluctant to produce a node. Can we uh, stimulate the source, please? Just be careful. Okay, we have a node confirmed. Mining extraction. When Chris is ready, can we bring subject back up for rooting, please? Thank you. Please ensure restraints are fastened for obvious reasons. Subject showing some During this recording, we learn a few things. First of all, what we are listening to is most definitely audio taken from the surgery stage in Vale's product testing, as we hear the words node, nest, and rooting. Three phrases that were used in the informational video from day 54 to describe how Vale modifies the human brain during surgery to install the Mirage game into their subjects. We also learn more about the pain caused by this procedure, as throughout this recording, the subject is heard screaming in agony during several moments throughout the surgery. And the surgery itself is possibly making the subject vicious as the voice we hear screams out, restrain that thing and get Chris out of there. We know from the informational video that Chris is the name of the surgeon and the audio we hear may suggest that subject 2 had become a threat whilst undergoing surgery. However, as we have no visuals to go off of here, we aren't entirely sure. And that moves us on to day 89. Note for investigation team. Despite repeated warnings, elements of this case are still being treated as some sort of joke by unknown members of the investigation team. Whoever has been adding dramatic music to case files, please immediately desist. Likewise, case notes such as this fell off or not enough hitting metal are inappropriate. This case is a serious legal investigation and not for your entertainment. Thank you. This note is once again directed at the audience of the Instagram page, mocking the many comments saying the page fell off and complaining about the lack of hitting metal. This note is then followed by another home recording taken from the inside of Joe's home as he watches the news report from day 69 about Michael Lee waking up from his supposed coma. Recognizing that the company being talked about is Vale Industries and being concerned about the whereabouts of Sasha, Joe calls up Vale to 
ask when he'd be coming home, to which they tell him that Sasha's tests ended on the 9th of November. If you remember the scene in which Michael's wife, Gia, sneaks onto a Vale intern's computer on day 60, then you may recall seeing text on the device that reads, Test Subject 2's external hardware was disconnected on the 9th of November 1991. In my previous video, I misread this date as September the 11th, as the way that dates are written in this series fluctuates a lot. However, we know for sure that it reads the 9th of November, as it corresponds with the exact date that Sasha's tests ended at Vale, telling us that Test Subject 2, who we heard screaming during surgery in the previous video, is without a doubt Sasha Wong. He is then told that it isn't Vale's problem that Sasha hasn't returned home, and taking matters into his own hands, Joe heads down to the Vale company building himself in hopes of finding Sasha, not knowing that he is of course trapped inside the game. And on his way to the building, he comes across strange drawings of pentagrams and even finds himself being watched from afar by a disturbing figure. And upon entering the building, he is caught. <laughs> On day 94, we are back with Sasha and Sam, who begin arguing whilst waiting for the game to update. And when Sasha is asked why waiting around makes him so angry, we witness one of the most memorable parts of the entire series. Illegal. I was living with my best friend Joe, and we didn't know where our lives would go. What is going on? I, I don't remember coding this feature. Uh, but who even is Gregor? And nothing was a bother because we both had each other, but then my mother fell on well. And money was tough and things got rough, now I'm stuck in this hell. Oh, you went and took my world away. It wasn't meant to go this way. They might own my life today, but one day you will pay. Why? Don't you know the property is theft? Now you're under arrest because I got nothing left. Oh, baby, don't you know the property is theft? Ah, ah. Oh no, McKaylee, don't you know the property is theft? But you stole my whole life when I'm trying to decipher how you don't know the property is theft. Uh oh. It's crazy. Don't you know the property is theft? I don't really know what you want me to do about this. Don't you know the property is theft? Wait, see him, see him. During the second musical number of the series, more lines of code are displayed on the big screen that read as follows. Game receive external command extract player. If command equals extract player, self validate command. Player is extract equals true, extracting player. The code here tells us that the game received a command from an outside source that forcefully extracted Samantha from the simulation. And despite not knowing who entered this command, we know it would have been performed by someone with the correct admin permissions, likely a high level employee at Vale. We also learn during the performance of the song that Sasha's mother fell unwell whilst he was living with Joe, and that money became tough because of it, which is likely one of the reasons he ended up in so much debt to begin with, and decided to partake in the Vale testing. And with that being all the information we can gather from day 94, let's move on. Day 103 plays out much like another informational video, with a collection of text appearing on screen telling us a variety of info. The text in question reads as follows. Entity Z002703, to be referred to from this file onwards as Noridian. Possible Noridian architecture, based on sonic analysis of Zoo File 1. We are then shown three images, architecture A, B and C. However, unlike A and B, C for whatever reason displays a single frame of static, and whilst displayed, a high-pitched ringing can be heard accompanying the strange image. It isn't very clear at this point what Noridian architecture is, however we are shortly introduced to the phrase Noridian nodes as well. This leads me to believe that these images display changes made to the human brain after having Noridian nodes inserted inside them during surgery. However, the following text shows that the insertion of these Noridian nodes may not always be intentional, explaining growing concerns about the possible nesting of Noridian nodes inside of FBI agents, then displaying the agents they believe have been infected. The three FBI agents shown here are actually Instagram profiles, all of which follow the official You Hit Metal 17 times account where these videos are posted. Every account displayed here has made comments on previous videos, all of 
which garnered a decent amount of attention. On day 94, FBI agent 1 Milk V97 commented, 7 days without investigation, a reference to how the account stopped posting daily after day 79. The comment received over 3,000 likes and over 40 replies, some of which were responded to by Milk V97. And the entire interaction between these profiles goes as follows. 7 days without investigation. The game could update at any time, so we could just be waiting around for 5-10 years. 9 now. It wasn't meant to go this way. Sir, you're infected. Seek help. They are trying to frame me. Don't believe everything you see. This is a conspiracy beyond your current understanding. Those who seek truth will find the answers. You should seek medical attention by an FBI specialist. Fair enough. Milk V97 also responded to a now deleted reply by saying, Why are you always so angry? A repeated quote taken from day 94. However, it's unclear as to what this comment is responding to. On day 89, FBI agent 2 Fausto Du made a comment reading, Is that the source or just an enforcer of some kind? I love how we went from a meme to Tron and now stuff is paranormal. I'm scared. The comment received over a thousand likes, and within the replies there are two more comments from Faustaudu which are responding to another now deleted comment. You. There's only one thing you can say at times like this. Fair enough. This account then made two comments on day 103 that read as follows. Fair enough. I think this is going a bit too far. Gonna step down from Instagram for some days. I'll keep you guys in the loop. May we're the ones that got somewhere close to the root of things, but again, don't investigate. Although I have screenshots of these two comments that I found on the creator's official discord, I was not able to find them myself as they are now buried in the sea of comments made by other accounts, so I am unsure if there were any further replies. If anyone is able to find more comments from Fausto Do, it would be much appreciated. Now moving on to FBI agent number 3, Hero Dots, who is quite possibly the most interesting commenter by by far. On day 78, Hero Dots commented, I knew that was Sasha when he said drat. The comment received over 300 likes and multiple replies, none of which were responded to by Hero Dots. Then on day 103, Hero Dots left the following comment, I don't know what happened, but I feel kind of weird. My body is itchy and my friend looks tasty. Then later that same day, on a live stream broadcasted from his official YouTube channel, Hero Dots is seen reacting to being featured in the most recent McKaylee video, and whilst live, creates a post on the official Instagram, the caption reading, fair enough, written in glitch text. He then made one final comment on day 103, this one reading 85710, and to accompany this, Milk V97 commented a similar number, this one reading 69398. And as people were quick to point out, out. 69398 is the code for Vault 3, the same code that Michael Lee gave to Samantha on day 51. And despite Hero Dot's comment also containing a 5 digit number, there has been no evidence to support that the number 85710 means anything important. A few weeks later, Milk V97 commented on day 103 again, another 5 digit number, this one reading 49427 which once again doesn't seem to mean anything. As of right now, I don't think looking into these numbers will be much use unless they are used by the creator later on in the series. By the looks of it, these three accounts were chosen at random and the people behind those profiles weren't being instructed to post any of these cryptic messages. The only reason Hero Dots decided to post the words fair enough in glitch text to his official Instagram is because someone in the chat was asking him to troll, which leads me to believe that all of these messages are just the chosen accounts playing around, trying to evoke more intrigue and interest in the series. I was also unable to find any 5 digit numbers posted by Fausto Do, which further supports my theory that these comments were not carefully planned out at all. The video then ends, with text explaining that the infected agent should seek immediate medical attention from FBI specialists, then cutting to black. 
the Instagram account then fell silent, with no new posts or updates of any kind, and people became concerned and curious as to when the next video would drop. And eventually, after 99 days, Day 202. On day 202, Sasha resumes the show having been alone since Samantha was extracted from the game, and whilst talking directly to the camera, the phone rings, causing him to answer it, and when he does, we hear the voice of Joe and the Vale agent that caught him on day 89. The agent threatens Joe, accusing him of trespassing on Vale property, to which Joe says he was simply trying to find Sasha and didn't mean any harm. And hearing this, the agent tells him that they spoke to Sasha and that he left a message for Joe, but it's very clear upon hearing the message that it has been staged for this exact purpose, to trick Joe into believing that Sasha is okay and not in any danger, with Sasha saying, that's not me speaking, don't believe it. And cutting to more camcorder footage taken by Joe, we see him get placed inside of a cell where he is told to stay for 12 hours, and he is given a magazine to use for entertainment, and getting a glimpse of it, we can see it says Bite Magazine, the same magazine that Sasha left a review for on day 82, and moving on to day 204, it's clear that Joe had found the review. Oi, answer me, who's Sam and why can't he be trusted? Oh. There's some simulation shit going on, I don't think my friend is okay. You, <laughs> oh. you just extend your time in cell, congratulations. Mm. You'll know it's because you fancy me, spitting kink. Notes for investigation team. Whoever has been putting tense music and dramatic boom sounds on the case files, please cease immediately. This is not entertainment, this is real life. Then for a mere 12 frames of the video, we see a line of heavily warped text. It's incredibly difficult to make out what it says, however I'm quite confident that it reads, they try to make it leave me, but I wanted it to stay. And although it's a confusing message, there is only one thing that I believe it could possibly relate to, Sasha, with the message referring to how he wanted to keep Michaeli around with him in the simulation, however Michaeli had other plans, and left the game by overstimulating himself. And with Sasha being alone inside the simulation ever since Samantha was forced out, it isn't a stretch to suggest that he may be attempting to communicate with the investigation team through these videos in hopes of eventually escaping. This hidden text is then followed up by an audio recording of what appears to be an interrogation, as Michael Lee is heard asking a woman if she knows where to find the source. And not being given the answer he wants, Michael asks Linda to open her cranial port, to which Linda refuses since they have no anaesthetic on hand, which causes Michael to threaten Linda, saying that she will receive the same treatment if she does not cooperate, forcing her to begin drilling into the woman's skull, resulting in a brief scream of intense pain that is interrupted by a message displayed inside the simulation reading node trauma detected. Sasha notices the message and the code that follows it. Node goodnight Sam status equals damaged. Accessing risk to network. Network risk equals high. If risk equals high, network trigger network protection mode. This tells us that the woman Michael Lee was interrogating was none other than Samantha Penford, and with the case reports seen throughout this series being titled Death of Samantha Penford, it's possible that the dangerous acts that Michael carried out on her in this moment were what caused her to die. We are of course unsure of the state that she is in after the procedure, however drilling in into someone's skull is obviously bound to do some damage. We then see the text entering network protection mode, followed by a list asking the player to select one of the following, attempt node restoration, event report, other. And selecting other, we are shown the following options. Dynamic facility map, facility controls, and initiate external contact. The video then ends, followed by day 208, in which Sasha uses the initiate external contact control to communicate with Joe, who had been stuck inside of his cell for over two days. And after catching up with each other, Sasha says that he found a way to unlock the cell. However, it would be risky to let him out, as it would result in Joe getting 
getting caught. But after tracking the guard's movement using the dynamic facility map, Sasha predicts that in about five hours there will be a gap, allowing Joe to escape the building if he is quick enough. Using the map we are also able to get a good look at the layout of the Vale Company building, with a large amount of the map being taken up by Vault 3, the vault used to store the source before it had been stolen. The conversation is then interrupted by a line of text reading, all agents be aware that Noridian is still uncontained and poses a threat to humanity. And paying close attention, we can spot some more hidden text that appears for a single frame and reads, no it doesn't, it's friendly. And with that we have reached the end of the most recent part in the series as of now. Unfortunately there haven't been any new videos posted to the account in almost two months. I was waiting around hoping that more would be posted while I made this video so I could cover more of the series in this part, however it looks like we're going to have to wait a bit longer. Usually in this part of the video I do a summary of what we've covered, however I don't think that will be necessary until more content is uploaded. We have however learned a few new things from the last handful of videos. We discovered that Sasha was also wrongfully being kept inside of the simulation against his will and that he was one of Vale's original test subjects, taking part in the tests in hope to pay off his large amount of debt. We also found out that Samantha was extracted from the simulation by Michael Lee, who attempted to drill into her skull without anaesthetic, causing damage to her node and possibly killing her. And I'm guessing we'll find out whether or not she survived in future videos. The FBI agent's subplot is also very interesting and I'm sure we'll hear more about the infected agents in later videos. There may even be more cases of audience interaction later down the line that I would really like to see. Using accounts of people who follow the official page was really clever and it makes me excited for what is next to come. But as of right now, that's currently where this series ends. I will continue to create more of these videos when more content is uploaded to the Instagram page, so expect a part 3 when there's enough to cover. But until then, that's where we'll leave it. I hope you enjoyed part 2 to this series. Feel free to leave your theories down in the comments and leave any suggestions for what you'd like me to cover next down there too. But until then, this has been part 2 to the McKaylee ARG. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you all later.